You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any win. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Thirsty Thursday. We will be going live this evening uh, for the Combine. I have some things I have to take care of this morning and today, but we will definitely be watching. I'll be having my buddy Game Time Brian. And we're going to see some of the future stars of the NFL and definitely have conversations about what the hell is going on with the Dallas Cowboys. You know, I, I try and read as many comments and get to all of the emails and stuff that I get. Um, I got this one from Steve, uh, who literally, I, I haven't read the whole thing because it's, it's almost like a book. Um, but just going through the beginning of it. Hey, Mark, I keep hearing you refer to the Cowboys being $9.5 million over the salary cap. That's not true, my friend. Remember, the NFL only counts the first 51 players on the roster towards the 2024 season, and the Cowboys are $3.5 million over the cap to date, which is, now let me be clear here, whether it's 3 dollars or if it's 9 okay? I'm going by sports track. Uh, sports track as well as over the cap and they're listing us as over 9.8 regardless if it is three three and a half that's great that's in comparison to where we normally are where we are usually like 30 35 um, over in some good years 25 we are in better shape um, and he's and also too he says of course I refer to the Eagles being 35 million uh, ahead of us roughly uh, and, of course, he said that's because of Jalen Hurts' contract, and they backloaded, which is very, very true. Uh, they already have, in one of the voidable years, about $95 million. Be that as it may, their philosophy is we're trying to win right now. And if you look at what uh, Sports Track put out there, and I don't think that's going to be the actual contract. I think that was more of a clickbait one. But if you look at what Sports Track put out there, a six-year Six-year, I'm sorry, three-year, sixty million a year deal with the first year being a forty-one million dollar hit, um, the second year being a eighty-five million dollar hit. Um, that still doesn't get us anywhere near to where the Eagles are uh, before restructuring. But we are running short on time because it is already Thirsty Thursday, and a week from Sunday begins legal tampering. Now the second part of this. Uh, discussion that he had he said um, um, you keep talking about uh, Dorrance Armstrong and if we were signing him it wouldn't be considered a top free agent signing let me back up here because Steve you kind of accused me of something I said if the Cowboys only re-signed their own players which is typical that that's not going to be enough. I didn't say that Dorrance Armstrong per se. I'd love to get back Dorrance Armstrong, but Dorrance Armstrong is probably going to end up commanding quite a bit of money on the market, in which case Stephen Jones will look for a cheaper alternative. I have never said that Dorrance Armstrong is not a player that I would like to get back. I would love to get Dorrance Armstrong back, but I don't know that that's going to be possible with the money that's out there and the money that the Cowboys will have. And so some of the players re-signing Stephon Gilmore if they do bring back Tyron Smith those are big key role players for us but here's the thing that you're missing in the point here is even if we do bring back all of those guys um, if we do not it, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world but the problem is is that's all we ever do we do that and then we rely on the draft and then we're done 
The thing is, is you have to still bring in more talent, especially in this day and age where you don't have a career where you've got a player locked up because of free agency, because there's so many teams, the talent is spread out and watered down because, of course, the salary cap. You can't stockpile talent. So you can't get enough solely by holding on to your guys and through the draft, especially in a year where we don't have a fourth or a fifth round draft pick. We have to bring in other players. If you look at a San Francisco that will make trades and bring in a Christian McCaffrey, you know, sign a Hargrave, you know, go out and bring in, you know, Randy Gregory, who, you know, you can look at it and say Randy Gregory, um, versus Dorrance Armstrong Armstrong. Dorrance Armstrong has had more sacks per year the last two years than Randy Gregory. Um, has been more impactful. The only thing with Dorrance Armstrong is he's a free agent and he is going to cost you a chunk of change. Um, my point being is here is, yes, we are going to have to re-sign some of our own free agents, but it won't be enough. We already have a problem at linebacker. We know our linebacking situation is not good. You know, as much as I had hoped Mozzie Smith was going to be a big run stuffer, he was not. And, of course, we're going to probably need to bring back Hankins because he was the best interior defensive lineman we had. It's getting long in the tooth. You'd like to have somebody younger that's going to be able to stay healthy because he's been injured the last two years. And when you look at running back situation, well, Tony Pollard is a good role-playing running back. The problem was is the roles that the Cowboys wanted him to play weren't suited to what he does. He's not an every-down run between the tackles back. just isn't. And that showed with his numbers going off a cliff. So it's not that I'm saying that our free agents and signing them aren't key because they are. What I'm saying is, is we have to do more than just that. We do. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. If we don't, we'll be just like we always are. Good enough to compete, but not good enough to go for a Super Bowl. And you have to recognize that it, you can have a good team, but you still need a few guys in case you have injuries that can fill the role so you're not dropping off a cliff. And a few guys that can be just a little added oomph to get you over the hump. So that's what we can hope for, and the question will be is, will the Dallas Cowboys do anything about that? The clock is ticking, and thus far, they have yet to restructure any contract to get any cap space before free agent frenzy starts on Sunday. So I'm waiting. I'm hoping. I'd like to see it, but we'll see what's what and who's who. So in the meantime, this is... Interesting, and I, I want to play this from Get Up because if you want to compare this team, these Dallas Cowboys, to the 90s teams and the lack of production, Lewis Riddick actually makes the perfect argument for me. Where the Cowboys are entering a pivotal offseason. We know about Dak Prescott, his cap number, all his leverage, everything else. But coming off another early playoff exit, team culture has been a huge topic of conversation. Yesterday, for the first time, Stephen Jones was asked about it. Here's what he said. From the organization on down, we feel we feel good about our culture. You always want to be better. Uh, I will say that. Our leadership on our team's outstanding. So, you know, you're always going to have somebody who's, you know, going to say something, uh, you know, that's not, you know, that might be, hey, that's their particular thought process on why we may have come up short, but I don't think in general. Personally, I don't think it's an issue. That's what he said. Dominique, what's your reaction? Yeah, I mean, they've had a lot of success, although they haven't won a Super Bowl since the 90s. They've had a lot of success, so it's hard to completely, like, denigrate what their culture is, having not been in the building. But we have seen some recent, like, demonstrations of their culture with players being critical of the star quarterback. And it, to me, it reminds me, I, I think I was on the show on... Uh, on Tuesday, and we had Graziano say that Ryan Poles is not concerned about our rundown for mm -hmm. Get Up.
That's true of Ryan Poles and the Bears. It feels like that the Cowboys are definitely 100% concerned with our rundown. They're concerned <laughs> with making uh, the most exciting and interesting reality show that they can, which they generates do more and more attention. And that's not new. And that's the part where it seems like at some point there has to be decisions made whether winning is more important or increasing franchise value by having giving people something to talk about. And it always seems like the latter is the most important down there in Dallas. <laughs> It's a fascinating way of looking. Je Jeff Darlington, what do you think? It, it can be hard. Look, I, I, I witnessed a lot of what was going on with the in-season hard knocks that was down here in South Florida with the Dolphins. It's a challenge to have those cameras around, to have that drama, to have that entertainment value around you all the time. But I will also tell you there are CEOs and presidents around the league that I've talked to who look at Jerry Jones and say, that is exactly what we all want to do. So <laughs> there is a Yeah, fine make line a whole lot of money. Here, and it can impede on your culture. Uh, I'm not saying they have a culture problem or, or not. That's something that they'll have to figure out on their own. But it comes with a lot of weight, a lot of pressure when you do want to be such an entertaining team. And well, they, they have a lot of very young, very mm. high-profile people mm -hmm. who, who are celebrities. And, right, right, maybe, Lewis, like, yeah, a lot of football players become stars. Yeah. In Dallas, they become celebrities. There's a little difference there, and, 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 and it may have some impact on the way we view it. What do you think? When, when, when they say, do they have a culture problem, what does Lewis think? Yeah, I, I think the problem is exactly what you're alluding to, is that this team is looked at more for now, their... I want you to listen to him do his rundown of all the Cowboy players, and then I want you to compare those to the players we have now their celebrity status and the way in which their names circulate on social media and in sports in general and and not as much for ultimately what got them as an organization to celebrity status in the first place which was the dynasty of the 90s and look and that is exactly and and before that and that's exactly what Emmett Smith has alluded to the fact that look you know what these guys are profiting off of the brand that we built me Troy, yeah. um, Michael, uh, Eric Williams, Larry Allen, Tony Casillas, Kevin Smith, Darren Woodson. We built that brand. Y'all are just Haley, now benefiting Deion from Sanders, it. You guys are getting more Michael and Irvin. more and more attention and more money and becoming bigger stars on the backs of what we accomplished on the field. Now, that's not to say that this isn't a talented football team because it is. So I'm not going to – so I don't, I don't know if they have a culture problem. What I do know – what I do know – is that they have a defensive size problem. I know they have a <laughs> yeah. stop the run problem against yeah. <laughs> teams like the Green Bay Packers and the Buffalo Bills. And I know until they fix that, they ain't going anywhere. They're not winning Thank any you. championships. Because you, you can talk about who is saying what about Dak and Micah's you know, podcast and CD needs to get a contract and all. You can talk about that all you want. Until you can line up against 12 personnel and stop it, and not put 207-pound linebackers on the field <laughs> and not have people just run through you over and over, as Ma as Marshawn Lynch said, over and over and over and <laughs> over and over again. Nobody cares about your culture. People just care about whether or not you can so, win the big one because that's what go. Troy and Emmett and Michael did, and they haven't done, point blank. Go ahead, that's Nate. the bottom line. There you the go. On but, the field, yeah, the, the on-the-field stuff. There you go. He put it in a nutshell. You can say it's Dak Prescott and everything else, but if we cannot learn to stop the damn run, if we cannot put linebackers that are over 207 pounds, if we do not do these things, he's right. The culture doesn't matter matters a lot but I think that also is part of the culture problem because it does feel like maybe I'm oversimplifying it but everyone feels like they have a scapegoat to point through to it's either Mike McCarthy or Dak's fault and that that keeps the team from looking in the mirror and figuring out where the other issues are and when you allow that to, to like continue but you then bring back the coach and you keep bringing back the quarterback that you let uh players, families, and other people close to the organization. And not just people close to the organization. A couple years ago, Jerry Jones was suggesting like that the contract negotiation was going to be challenging and maybe Dak won't be back. Like You perpetuate those things. I think it does allow for it a scapegoating that does not the um, force them to look in the mirror and address some of those on-field issues and some of those game plan concerns that they do have.
But you, go ahead, no, so, Nick, the only thing I would say in response, the only thing I would say in response to that is this, though. Look, I, I understand. I understand exactly what you're saying. What you're saying, which means sometimes maybe not. They're not really facing reality. The reality of where they actually are, as far as one through 53, what this roster looks like. But there are people in that building who that's their job. That's their job, regardless of yeah. what people are saying about Dak, what CD saying about Dak, or Micah saying about CD, or Micah saying about Dak, or what Jerry is saying. There's people in there whose job is to go, "Hey, look, man, you know what?" When Buffalo decided to line up and put big people on the field, we had yeah. no answer. When Green Bay came down here with Jordan Love, they ran through us at will. And we are not ultimately right. going to get to what everyone keeps basically getting on us about the most, which is we can't win the big game. That's, that's where the focus needs that's to be. And from there, it's funny how things will kind of work themselves they, out they, right. once you start getting those big wins under your belt. I'm they've done, the clock. They've we'll, we'll done a talk. good job of building. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, look, I'm up against the clock, so I got to go. But I, we'll come back to this. I knew this. Okay. All right, pirated telecast there. But you, he, Lewis Riddick hit the nail on the head. And it seems like the Cowboys are at least looking at trying to do something different. Now, I, and truth be told, I will say that the Cowboys – have been trying to draft defensive linemen. I don't know still why we let John Ridgeway get away um, from us. Mozzie Smith, we need him to uh, pay his bills so he doesn't lose the storage unit and stuff like that so he can focus in on the Cowboys uh, season. I don't know why we decided that he needed to lose 40 pounds, but we did. And so far, we've got nothing out of him. Maybe, just maybe, we'll end up getting a bump from those guys growing up a little bit more uh, from our draft class and getting overshown back uh, to get a little bit of a boost because we truly are going to need that because unless the Cowboys dig into free agency deeper, we just basically have the same team coming back as we've had before, which has not been enough. All right, good people, as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, and I will see you soon.